Hello. Today I want to talk about the snap release. The snap re release is just another way of accelerating the club through the golf ball by releasing the club more efficiently. Uh, maybe the first thing is to think, okay, what is release? Well, it's all about using the shaft as a lever and creating wrist angles which you then release through the golf ball to accelerate the club through the golf ball. If you look at it on a mathematical basis, a driver shaft, because of its length, can create almost six times the hand speed that you generate through rotating your body and pulling your arms down. And that's basically what we're looking for, is get as much club head speed as possible, which will obviously transfer to ball speed. If you can do that in a way which will actually stabilize the club face at the same time, then it's win-win. The question is then, how do we release? And there's a lot of theories on the market today, um, from flipping the wrists to really just allowing the forces of nature to straighten the wrist, to slowing the hands at impact, and so on and so forth. And we're going to use what I call a snap release to actually do this, which I believe is the most efficient way. It's very similar to the idea of kind of slowing the hands before impact, which is caused primarily by the change of direction of the lead shoulder. You'll be pulling the club down due to the rotation of the shoulder and pulling it forward, but at some stage, the shoulder will actually start to pull away, back away from the golf ball, pulling the arm and the end of the grip with it. And this is actually going to slow down the movement of the hands towards the target, move them more away from the golf ball and allow the club head to not only catch up but overtake your hands through impact, causing the club to accelerate and hopefully the club face not to close too early. If it does, then obviously you get this kind of flippy action. The snap release will help you to stop that. And the reason that it works is simply because rather than getting this kind of flippy release where the bow in the lead wrist is basically going into extension through impact, what we're actually going to do is we're going to straighten the wrist in, in by stretching out the grip. If you were to just take um, a grip without a shaft, then it will actually allow you to stretch it out. And if you hinge your wrists and then stretch, hinge and then stretch, you can actually get real speed going on just by doing this stretching. And it gives the added benefit that it is actually stopping to a certain extent because of the pressure you're applying to the grip, the club from flipping over. It's kind of straightening it out and then kind of holding it through impact. This is a position that you will see Tommy Fleetwood in an awful lot because he has more of a feeling of kind of punching the ball out there and sometimes he'll get to kind of chest height and the club head has still not overtaken his hands. This isn't really because he's blocking as much as he's stretching the grip and this stretch is what's giving him the extra snap in his swing and not only getting a club face square but accelerating the club head as well. So how does this work in the practice? Well, really an awful lot of it is about timing, but you can take your backswing as usual and then try and get some bow in your wrist as you come down, or you can do a bit of a Dustin Johnson or John Rahm and get the, the, the club actually, or the wrist actually back in the backswing and then go straight into this kind of snap release in the downswing. But for the majority of you, as you come down, you want to be building a bit of bow. And after you've got the bow, you can start actually pulling on the golf club. The feeling of your hands moving away from one another. This will cause, first of all, a, an issue with balance. You've got to get as much pressure moving down as you have moving away. So obviously it's also a question of how efficiently your shoulders are turning. So if you have an efficient shoulder turn, as I said, the lead shoulder will be moving up anyway. The lead hand will be pulling the club up away from the ground. And you want to have the feeling of pushing down the shaft with your trail arm and hand down the shaft towards the ground. Now, I know this is gonna make a lot of you a little bit nervous because you'll be scared of hitting the ground. And if, in truth, your trail hand pushes down harder than your lead hand pulls up, 
That's exactly what you'll do. And that will give you the kind of the feeling, oh gosh, I'm doing it wrong. But you aren't. You've got to get that balance. And if you get the balance right, you should actually see that you're making an impact with the ground somewhere around the lead uh, foot, just inside the lead heel. The harder you pull with your lead side, the less that you'll actually contact the ground and the harder you push down with your trail side, the more that you will actually contact the ground. So to a certain extent, you want to be just practicing this and almost trying to, trying to control how much ground you actually want to take with you. And in truth, once we actually get that kind of feeling, it's just about putting a ball in the way and timing it correctly. Now, I don't know if you've seen that ball, but that one went off quite nicely and it's all really because I have this feeling not only of actually accelerating the club down through the golf ball, but I have this feeling of kind of straightening and stretching out the grip, which is stabilizing the club face at the same time. So it's win-win. So this is really something which is gonna help your game immensely. Snapping the wrist rather than swinging the wrists, snapping the wrists rather than, than flipping the wrists. It's all about generating club head speed and at the same time controlling the club face. And I feel that this kind of snapping, this extending of the shaft and pulling down towards or pulling away from the ground and pushing down towards the ground when it's balanced is the way to longer shots, more control of the golf ball and more fun on the golf course. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, maybe even subscribe to the channel. I'll be back next week with some more tips for you. See you then. Goodbye.